What is going on YouTube? It is Primitive here today bringing you a highly requested video. I've had many people ask me how to beat Yellow Green Rookie Rush with Lord Nightmont and I just so happen to be very very experienced in the matchup. My state is absolutely flooded with Rookie Rush. It's impossible for me not to play at least one. I usually play two every local that I go to just because there's so many people playing it which forced me to get really good at the matchup. It forced me to play the matchup a lot and then from there I have been able to tweak my game plan and my deck list to the point now where I have a very highly consistent win rate versus Rookie Rush. I believe since the last time I lost to a rookie rush in tournament I've played five rookie rushes and I've 2 would every single one of them in tournament and so ever since I've changed my game plan a little bit the consistency of this matchup has gone from me losing almost every single game to me now being 10 and 0 in my last 10 games in tournament versus rookie rush so with that being said let's go ahead and go to the breakdown of what today's video is going to look like so the first thing we were going to talk about today is the many weaknesses of rookie rush so that way I you can have a better context of why the things I'm going to talk about that give you advantages of matchups work. There are many weaknesses of Rookie Rush that are pretty exploitable. So if you are aware of these, you can start to exploit them and you'll be able to formulate your own flow charts by just the general board state. When we talk about flow charts later, I'm going to go ahead and give you the first couple turns. And then the weaknesses of the deck are going to go ahead and give you the information that you need to play the rest of the game. And then, like I said, we will talk about the flow charts to win. This is the things you should be doing for the first one to three turns, as well as different things that are okay to do in the matchup, like playing very high cost Digimon as hard play is something that we will talk about later. And then the last thing we'll talk about is the most impactful cards that I've seen in the matchup and why they're so impactful. So that way, if you're not running them in your deck and you want to patch up this matchup, you can put them in there or you can add more if you're only running maybe one or two. Or if you're planning on building this deck and you want to have a good Rookie Rush matchup, you'll know exactly which cards to buy before you build the deck. So getting into it, let's go ahead and talk about the weaknesses of Rookie Rush, and I'll go ahead and explain why they're weaknesses and how to exploit them going into each one. So the first weakness is the low hand size slash lack of draw power. You see this deck after the very early game, Rookie Rush is going to have two, maybe three cards in hand, but usually just one or two, and that's very exploitable because when you think about their deck, their deck is two cost, three cost cards, and maybe something like Puppetmon or the higher cost Spiral Masquerade. But once you get through the early game, they're going to have much less cards in their hand, which is very, very exploitable because of the fact that if you get a board state, uh, if you get a board state advantage and your opponent only has two cards in hand, they're pretty much never going to come back because the best thing that they can do is play a rookie and then spiral if they have two cards in hand. Or if they're lucky and have three, they can play two rookies and spiral, which is still 6k, which if you play like a Nightmon, for example, which you could see in my finals match I posted last week, I just played a hard... I hard played a Nightmon to put my opponent at 7 to kill one of their cards, but they only had one card in hand, so there was no possible way for them to actually kill my Nightmon, and all they did was end up playing an Araramon for 2 when they're at 7 memory and passing. So they essentially wasted 8 memory because I understood that they didn't have any options with the amount of cards in their hand, so I was able to just play a Nightmon, kill one of their Digimon, and then next turn I threatened to go into Mega. The second weakness is the deck is just one dimensional and it's just highly predictable. Unlike other decks that have different game plans and can take different flowcharts, this deck does one thing. It plays rookies and it plays spiral. And if you can prepare for that, you can start to play ahead because you, unlike other matchups where you have to think about what your opponent could have, what they could draw, with Rookie Rush, you know, they're either going to play rookies or they're going to spiral you. So if you can keep in mind that in two turns from now, all your opponent's going to do is either play a rookie, spiral something on your board, or swing. You can start to plan multiple turns ahead and just start to have a general game plan of what's going to happen. Obviously, the DP of each rookie that they play is going to change how you play the matchup and how many they have, yada, yada, yada. But just knowing the fact that they can only do one thing and they can't change that game plan ever makes it much easier for you to plan out your hand as you draw so you can see what cards you need in future turns and what cards you can get rid of now. Another weakness is that most of them play no memory tamer. Some of them play low memory tamer. If you see, saw my yellow green rookie rush, I did have two TKs in the list that I was testing. Since then, I did cut it because I noticed that just having more rookies is more valuable because of the fact that you're going to have a low hand size. So when you have a very low hand size and you top deck and you top deck TK, it's not very useful. So I decided to cut it and a lot of other people feel that same sentiment. So with that being said, you can exploit this very easily just by putting them to one that forces them to do or forces them to have blinding ray and play blinding ray to just do something else besides play a rookie. And the thing is, is yeah, your opponent playing Binding Rate is a downside because they're going to be getting more rookies on board, but you have to keep in mind that this matchup is also something that you can race. So if they start Blinding Ray, you can just start swinging in and uh, hope that you can just maybe get enough swings in to out-tempo them and then get a Bushi to swing in for game, but uh, just consider that Blinding Ray is both a blessing and a curse for that matchup. 
Another thing is they just can't play around security triggers. Unlike other decks, like let's say you were playing a black deck with Lord Nightmon, it's very easy to play around a potential ultimate flare by just digivolving on top of your rookies that are three or less cost, or playing higher cost Digimon for your rookies when you play them for three, such as uh, Bushi Agumon or Lusumon. And that way you can play around it. Sure, they may get rid of your Lord Nightmon and maybe a rookie, but it's a lot easier to play around. As far as Rookie Rush, if they hit something in security, they, they can't really play around it. If they... With Lord Nightmon, if you swing into a red deck with your Lord Nightmon and hit Gaia Force, since your Lord Nightmon suspended, they're probably not going. They can Gaia Force it, but it's much less of a downfall because it's already suspended. You can play around stuff like that, but Rookie Rush can't. So if you're having a hard time, you can play security cards, and this just works for every matchup. Security cards are good against Rookie Rush if they are able to clear more than one Digimon at a time, and even just clearing one Digimon at a time is fine because lower, like I said, they're going to run out of cards, and if you can get rid of their board state when they run out of cards, you just win the game. And then the last weakness we'll talk about is that they just can't recover from a board state. If you wipe their board and they get down to one or two cards, they're just not coming back. Like I said, they play one rookie, two rookies, and then Spiral. What are they going to do? They can't even clear a Nightmon with that. You can go into Mega. And so if you can just play around getting into an actual board start, killing their stuff, having more Digimon than your opponent, and having high DP stuff... At that point, they're never going to be able to come back as long as you made it so they didn't take all your security because if they took all your security, then they can just promote from raising and swing for game if you don't have a blocker, which is something that you're going to have to think about going forward. But the primary thing is that if you're able to get a board state over them, it's going to be very, very hard, if not impossible, for them to come back. Before we get into this, I just want to say that for all the things I'm about to say, you can go back and watch my match versus Rookie Rush if you want, and you're going to see a lot of what I talk about displayed in there. If you watch that match after watching this, you may get a little more context of why I'm doing the plays that I have, and it might make a little more sense to you. So I just want to say, after this video, you should probably go check out that video just so you can get a visual of what the matchup looks like when I'm actually playing it, because I don't have any other footage of it right now. Um, I can get some more in the future, but that matchup is a very good example of what that matchup can look like especially when things aren't going super well for you but you win anyway so definitely go check that out all right so let's go ahead and get into it um, i pulled out these cards because i would say these are the most impactful cards in the matchup and these are the ones that i thought about the most when trying to figure out the best game plan to win and that's going to be the two drop 5ks so all of them um, any color they're all very annoying starmons because it is just so synergistic with the deck and it can just delete your unimon and your pedomons like just hard play it's very annoying spiral masquerade the card that i had to figure out how that was the hardest to figure out to beat and the one that i figured out that if you can beat this uh you win the matchup so i had to figure out how to play around this so this was one of the main cards that i thought about and then also blinding ray because blinding ray one makes it so you can't choke them but also gives them just so much value like if they Binding Ray turn one, they can play two rookies alongside the one that they put in Raising, so that next turn they have three rookies, and then they can play two more, and it just gets a lot really out of control. So I would say these are the main cards to worry about that I had to think about. I will say there is one honorable mention, which will be Puppetmon. Puppetmon is not in all uh, yellow-green rookie rush decks, and it's not the most devastating card to see but you have to keep in mind that with lord nightmon you are going to be swinging just to activate the effect which means that you just naturally play into puppetmon so if you are in a position and you think if i do this and they puppetmon i lose you probably shouldn't do it because puppetmon is a deck that a lot of rookie rushes are playing two to three of some are even playing four but there are some that are playing none so i guess if you don't know your opponent's list i would always maybe be cautious about puppet mon just because like i said it's not the most devastating but it can be really annoying because it can shut you down and being shut down for a turn can be some game losing sometimes all right so with that being said with all the weaknesses that we talked about with these being the main cards that i thought about what did I come to as a conclusion of how to play this matchup to where I am now very consistently winning the matchup in, I would say, mostly dominant fashion because I never really feel like I'm going to lose even when I fall behind on security because I understand that security is a resource. So since I mentioned that, I'll just say that's the first thing that's a part of it is that your security is a resource. Letting your opponent swing into your security is fine because a lot of times they're going to die and you're going to probably go down to one, maybe zero security most games uh, against Rookie Rush. So don't use security as a indication of if you're winning or not. Use the board state because this matchup is won on the board and not in security. Um, and I don't mean that with like security triggers. I mean just the count of security in this matchup doesn't define who's ahead. It's 100% board state. So here's the game plan I came up with and luckily it is extremely extremely simple. 
And the game plan is, it's very simple. You go into ultimate in raising. That is step one. Step two is you either have TK on the field or you have blinding ray in hand. Then what you're going to do is you're going to promote. You're going to either have TK or you're going to have blinding ray so that you can go into Lord Nightmon. And then this is where you, this is how you win the matchup. And I'll explain it. So you want to go ultimate raising so that you can bring the mega out. You don't want to promote into, um, like as a champion, unless you really, really need to cycle your rookie. There are so many games against Rookie Rush where I only use one egg the entire game. Like I just promote the one time and then there's like a one, two turns where it just pops off and then you just win or your opponent scoops or stuff like that. But either way, you go up to ultimate, you bring it out and then you attack and then you play, let's say, another Nightmon. And then uh, you can Slash on top of this, or you can Valder on top of this. And this is where the game is won. Because like I said, if you can make it so your opponent cannot clear your board with Spiral, then you will probably... Or well, not you're probably going to... You are going to win because there's so much DP removal in this deck um, that you're going... Once you get to a point where your opponent can't kill you and you have too much DP for them to Spiral... It gets to the point where if they spiral, they're going to kill, like, one dude. Because if you go Lord Nightmon and you swing over a Digimon, play Nightmon to pop something else with Pikmon's ability, if you have it, or just, uh, you know, there's a 3Ks, and then you either go Slash on top of here or Volder on top of here, you're going to clear so much that it gets to a point where if they spiral, they're going to be like, okay, you're going to be able to clear my Nightmon, but that's all you did for the turn, I'll just develop some more. You want to just get as many stats on the board as possible with DP reduction, and that is it. I mean, there's a little bit more that we're going to talk to it, but that is the general game plan. If you can get enough DP on board and get big enough to the point where you are starting to get Lord Nightmon out and clearing the board with things like Nightmon, Pikmon, Slash Angemon, War Growlmon, um, Valder Arm. I would say your best ultimate to have in raising is obviously going to be War Growlmon. War Growlmon's going to Digiburst to give minus 4k, um, so that can clear even an extra Digimon. But at that point... Your opponent's going to be so low on resources, and you're going to have so much presence on board because you're because once you get to this point, you don't have to play in raising anymore because you can just start putting blockers out. You can start putting this into mega. You can start playing star mons. You can, you're just going to get to a point where your opponent's not going to be able to clear your board, which means that their spirals become almost useless. And once their spirals are almost useless, they're just a deck of rookies, which is way way easier to beat because if you are playing a list like mine or playing the list that I posted, I have seven blockers. So being able to just get to a point where your opponent's spiral are useless because it's going to end their turn without clearing my board and I'm just going to develop next turn, they lose because they run out of steam. You hit something and the worst thing that you can hit in security is like flower cannon, but you're not going to attack into security until you're safe. So um, once you've developed enough to where you can start attacking freely, that's when you start attacking. But until then, you just play, you play in raising, you get to ultimate, and then from there... Uh, you play Lord Nightmon, and you start going in. All right, now, so let's talk about Nightmon really quick. I was thinking about saving to talk this about the key cards, um, but I think this is worth talking about now because it is a main part of my game plan when I'm playing. Hard playing Nightmon is fine a lot of times to the mid to late game because your opponent's going to be at two or less cards most of the time, and so they can't clear... You're going to be able to clear Digimon. They're not going to be able to clear with um, Spiral, and they won't even have the seven memory worth of mana to use or memory to use you're pretty much going to put them at seven they can't use all of it and then you're going to be able to threaten to go mega next turn which then as we just talked about once you go into lord nightmon things start going so well in your favor so keep in mind that early game you don't want to do it because you don't want them to flood the board but once they start getting down to a low like a low count you can start playing nightmon because how much memory you give them doesn't matter because they only have like four memory worth of cards in hand anyway so anything above that is fine same thing with valder arm when you digivolve valder arm Doing it for six is almost always fine because, like I said, they pretty much have like four or five memory in hand anyway, and sometimes even less than that, so they can't do anything about it. And once you get to this later game, you're going to notice that if your opponent's holding onto a card continually for a very long time, keep in mind that it is Blinding Ray. If they're going to have a card in hand, once they fall behind, it is almost always going to be Blinding Ray. It could be Spiral, but they'll you get them to a point where their Blinding Rays are useless because you're so far ahead, and Nightmon is like really vital in doing that like getting ahead because your opponent's going to have seven memory and they're gonna be like oh i'm gonna play my two cards now they have no cards and you're gonna go and just clear the board next turn anyway
All right, so let's go ahead and start getting into what are the most influential cards in the matchup, in my opinion. I'll go ahead and explain why I think they're the most influential, and um, so that way, even if you don't want to play the cards, you can at least understand the reasoning why and maybe make some adjustments to your deck with the same logic that I'm using here. Also, I will go over a couple cards that may seem like they are good in the matchup, which are optional if you want to play them, but are completely unnecessary. So getting into it, these are the rookies that I would recommend. Um, Starmons, I feel like is pretty obvious. It just deals damage on DP. You can play all of these for free with Lord Nightmon and Andromon, which is going to be really big when thinking about why these are good in the matchup. But being able to play Starmons and being able to just minus DP, you basically just kill a Digimon with this, and then you can go into Blocker if you want. So playing this off of Lord Nightmon or Andromon, killing something and then going into Blocker is a very good uh Thing to do obviously because it's going to slow down their aggression a lot um, and then the two recovery cards i explained in the deck list why um patamon's in there so go check that out if you want to know why i play patamon but the main thing we're going to talk about is just recovery i think it makes sense we're playing against rookie rush so being able to recover especially the fact that we're going to be able to play both of these for free almost always because of our natural effects in the deck makes it really good this is a matchup where the longer the game goes the more favorable you are so being able to make the game go longer by recovering as well as just playing extra digimon like i said you can recover or you can play a blocker off of this one which is even more devastating because you recover and then lucimon obviously is now a 10k body which means that it's going to take four cards to kill a spiral masquerade as well as the only thing in the deck that will be able to kill it in security is puppetmon so once you play this it's pretty much there forever and it's going to threaten for the entire game Next up for the champions, I just have the blockers. There's nothing really to say here. There's not a lot of champions that are really going to help you in the matchup. There's some stuff that seems like it can be, do good, but you have to keep in mind that when you're building a deck, you can't just build it to beat one deck, especially if it's not the main deck in the matchup or in the format. So when thinking about the champions, yeah, there's probably some other champions that you could play with that would be specifically good versus Rookie Rush, but they are going to be worse against a broader range of decks as to where Unimon and Pitomon are not. They are great in the Rookie Rush matchup, and they are fantastic in other matchups. Pitomon's insane, Unimon's insane, and it's really good in the mirror. So these two cards just make perfect sense because they're great in that matchup, and they're great in every other matchup. Next up, the ultimates. Uh, these are the ultimates that I play naturally, which is good because they're just naturally good versus the this deck. War Growlmon is obvious because it's going to give minus 4k DP, which is going to just stack on with Pikmon and all the other DP reduction to just give you extra removal. Like I said, this is going to be the best one to get in raising because you're going to be able to promote Digiburst and then go into Lord Nightmon and get even more clearage going, which actually helps promote Pikmon better because going into that point you probably or not pick oh yeah Pikmon um because going and promoting you probably don't have any other Digimon so being able to pair this and then get Pikmon activated is just going to kill an Araumon or a Lyomon which is great Nightmon I already talked about you hard play it, it clears something and like I said in the mid to the late game the memory almost doesn't matter so it's fine and then Andromon is just absolutely amazing because not only do we have the security attack minus two on Digivolution which is helpful at times not the biggest thing but that is a great effect versus Rookie Rush because you get to stop one Digimon for a turn essentially but the main thing is the inheritable effect being able to play rookies for free is absolutely insane because you can play the recoveries that we saw earlier or you can play starmon or you can even race the opponent and play bushies and try to win in that way so what an absolute good card in the matchup next up the megas lord knight war greymon i could put slash here but slash isn't necessarily a great tech in the matchup sure it gets rid of a turimon or it gets rid of a 5k digimon but it's not super insane after that it is cool uh, to get when you play nightmon for free and it's really synergistic but it's not necessarily amazing in the matchup the reason these two are so good is one uh lord nightmon we already explained multiple times why this is the main key to winning the matchup is making sure you get this out safely and then start activating the effects that you need so there's not much else to explain there but war greymon's really great in this matchup because of the fact that andromon and pikmon are not once per turn effects so being able to kill a digimon with a with this effect um, by giving minus 6k and then activating andromon's effect and activating pikmon's effect twice it's absolutely insane in the matchup um i only play one in this list but it is so good in this matchup that if you do want to play more i would say this is a great card in the matchup but really only if you're playing andromon other than that it's just kind of killing a digimon to get a security into your hand which you're trashing a security essentially um which would just happen if that Digimon attacked into it, they would probably die and you'd lose that security. So if you're not playing Andromon, it's not as good. But paired with Andromon and paired with Pikmon, it's absolutely insane. Good old Valderarm. 
there's not much else to say to him except when you Digivolve on top of him, he kills two of their Digimon, making it so you have further board state and you put a Digimon on board that they are just not going to clear because it takes way too many Digimon on board for this to um, kill with Spiral and they're probably never going to get to that point if you got to the point where you're Valder Arming anyway. And then lastly, we have the Tamers. So the Tamers are really important. Uh, I know not everybody plays Kari, but if you saw my deck list, I do play one Kari. And it is really good in this matchup just because when they swing, you do go ahead and gain a memory, which a lot of time can end your opponent's turn. So it's really threatening. Um, it's not the most insane card in there, but I do have this in here for other stuff, and it's just been really good in the Rookie Rush matchup for me. Um, I really like it, and like I said, any deck that's super aggressive, being able to take one memory away from them every single time or every single turn that they attack is really powerful. And then TK is just extremely important in this matchup because, like I said, you want to be able to guarantee to be three memories. So you can go into Lord Nightmon, or you can play Starmon and go into a blocker, or anything like being able to just naturally go to three makes it so that if you Volder Arm, they only go to three which means that you can do it earlier without threatening too much board presence and tk is just really fantastic but that is all the cards that i play in my deck that i would recommend let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the cards that i don't play in the deck but you may if you think about it all right so i've done a lot of testing in this matchup and i've tested a lot of different cards so the list of cards that i actually have to recommend for you to put in is one card and that's going to be Kentorismon. if you like playing Kentorismon, this card is perfectly fine because one it's Perfectly works in the deck because it is a Holy Warrior, so you can go ahead and search this if you want with Kodemon or Gladimon. So it is a card that doesn't take away from other matchups and does provide help in this matchup by pretty much stalling out a turn because you can give up to five Digimon security attack minus two. Sure, if you do that, you probably are going to get spiraled uh, because they will have so many Digimon on board. You will be able to clear one off this, but you do stall for a turn. I think this card is fine. I've seen a lot of Lord Knights playing Kentorismon. I'm not the biggest fan of it in my list just because I think Slash and Wargreymon are both better, but this card is fine. So now let's go ahead and talk about the cards that seem like they could be good in this matchup, but I don't recommend you playing at all because I think they're baits. The first one is Salomon. Salomon would make sense as a card to put in there because it is recovery plus one and it attacks so you can help race. But the thing is, is this card is just mostly outclassed by Patamon and the fact that in this specific matchup, you want the on play ability because if you go for this, the fact that this takes two turns to essentially activate is just a little too slow. Sure, if you have this out there, it's great if they Spiral Masquerade you and so you can gain a security on their turn, but the chances that they do that are pretty much zero. So as much as this card seems good, it is not as great as Patamon. If you don't have Patamon and you want to play the second recovery card, you can play Salamon, but it is just outclassed by promo Patamon in this matchup. The second is Magnadramon. Magnadramon is a card that I've seen some people play in Lord Nightmon. I've tested it myself. I'm not the super biggest fan, but the thing is, is like I said, putting your opponents to super high memory is not something that's super bad in this matchup towards the mid to late game. And being able to do this, recover two, and then when you attack, start playing rookies, it's actually super insane in the matchup. If you are compl if the if you have an extra slot and the only thing you're worried about is Rookie Rush, then this is the card I would recommend putting in, to be honest, because I think it's the best card uh, that's like a specific tech towards it. Because, like I said, once they get to two to three cards, the spirals aren't going to matter, so their memory isn't going to matter. And then that way you can recover, start playing more rookies, pair this against Lord Nightmon, and it's pretty much over. And now the last card, which I'm sure you're all waiting for, is Spiral. Now, I think this card is a bait. If you think this card is fine in other matchups, that's perfectly fine. You can play it. I don't play it in my list. I did cut it um, for this Kari, like I talked about in the decklist profile. But if you like this more, then you can go ahead and play for it. But let me go and talk about why I think this card is completely unnecessary, even though it looks like it's really good. The reason why this card is completely unnecessary is because when you are going up into Ultimate and you are playing, uh, you are not going to have a lot of Digimon on board at the beginning and once you get to the point where spiral is actually going to be impactful you're probably going to be on head uh, head on board to the point where it doesn't really matter because your opponent's never going to catch up making spiral kind of just a win more card and if you go watch my finals match you'll see that i played spiral in one matchup and it was like yeah it was cool but i could have valder armed on that turn and would have done the same thing and this uh, the same yeah, the game would have played out very similarly and then there was another time where the one time this was hit in security i didn't have any digimon on board because i was still building up and raising and so spirals kind of just not the best in the matchup like i said how you win this matchup is how you play it how you promote it how you use your memory so you want to be able to go up an ultimate uh in raising promote do all that stuff and that's how you win the matchup spirals just a win more card and it is kind of like a hope and security so that way when your opponent's swinging to security sure there's there is some hope to survive but the thing is is most of the time, you're not going to be able to develop enough Digimon on board to spiral 
uh, until you get to the point where you're already ahead and winning. And so, like I said, it's a win more card. If you like Spiral in your deck, I'm not saying it's a bad card. I think it's an amazing card. So if you want to play more of it, play more of it. That's just my reasoning. Uh, it is a great card, but it is just unnecessary in the matchup. It is just win more. So if you just play the slower uh, building strategy and killing stuff and getting board presence, you're going to win. So you don't need Spiral. All right, that's my guide against Yellow Green Rookie Rush. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. It's not just some crazy convoluted thing that just gives you an aha moment. It is just playing really slow. It is just playing around Spiral. So I tried to give this as much information as I can, but like I said, it is a deck that just has one thing to do. So there's not a bunch of different crazy things you have to do. You just have to play around what the one thing they can do is. So with that being said, if you enjoyed this, if this was helpful for you, I would greatly appreciate it if you gave this a like and subscribed. And with that being said, I will see you next time for some more Digimon TCG content. You have a great day. Peace out.